Everything's swell. Hello and back to YCFT. Today we're taking a look at a strange little movie. We're taking a look at Hello Mary Lou, Prom Night 2. It gets extra marks for rhyming. Yeah. I, for the life of me, could not find a copy of this film. So That's instead hard. I've got two, instead of having Prom Night 2, I've got two Prom Nights. The original and the remake. Yeah. I would love a hard copy of this. I would love to get this on Blu-ray. There needs to be a special edition Blu-ray made. I also wanted to say that I failed in set dress because I did want to get a tiara. And I had many opportunities to get a prom queen tiara and I failed every time. So I'm sorry. It's okay. The, I'm the annoyed audience, with myself. The audience forgives you. I am annoyed with you myself. You put about as much prep time into the set dress as the movie did. As the movie did. <laughs> this is a, it is a strange little movie, this one. I'll do a quick premise and then yeah. we'll get into what is strange about it. So the movie opens in 1957 and we are introduced to Mary Lou Maloney. Yeah. Going to church for confession. Oh, yes. This is a great opening. I'll, I'll give it. And instead of doing a confession, she basically just says that she's been with many guys, many times. I have the full quote. Do you want to do the full quote? Okay. <clears throat> in the confession booth to the priest. Yeah. I disobeyed my parents. I've taken the Lord's name in vain. I've had sinful relations with boys at school. Many boys. Many times. And I loved every minute of it. Father, there is one more thing. What is it, my poor child? I loved every minute of it. And then she leaves her phone number in the booth and she writes it in lipstick. Yeah. And then she like, she leaves with Sanders giving the priest a little kiss. It's so cool. I really love that opening. I, what, you learn I, everything you need to know about this character. Yeah. What's the name of the actress that plays her? Lisa Schrage. She is really good. Yeah, she's great. Then she goes to prom and she knows she's going to become prom queen. She's there with her date, Billy, but ditches Billy for a guy called Buddy and Billy is not very happy about that. Billy's a square. So when she's n- knighted? Given pro- she's well, crowned. Crowned, that's the word. Well, she's, not even, she's not technically crowned. She's announced. She's announced and as she's about to be crowned, Billy takes a, sto- a, smoke, a stink bomb that yeah. he saw some other students who were going to use but they kind of ditched it when the principal was nearby. So he goes up to the rafters and throws it down to embarrass her because, you know, she's embarrassed him. Her dress catches on fire and she burns to death. It escalated very quickly. Billy did not intend for things to end that way. I think he just wanted to embarrass her. But yes, she does end up burning to yeah. literal death. On the look, the, on the when she turns to look at him whilst on fire. Oh, she knows. She knows. So she knows. It's an excellent fire stunt. As oh, well. it is. So she's dead. Uh, 30 yeah. years later, Buddy has grown up into Michael Ironside and is now the principal of the school. No, it's Billy. But yeah, Billy. did I say it? But yeah, Billy has grown up in the Michael Ironside. Uh, Buddy is now the local priest. Yes. And we're introduced to Vicky, played by... Vicky is played by Wendy Lyon. She's our main character in this movie, and throughout the film she gets possessed by the ghost of Mary Lou because she wants... She still wants to become prom queen. We'll go into a few more details as we go, but that's basically the synopsis of the film. That's essentially the premise, yeah. The first movie was not supernatural in any way. No. This movie actually has nothing in common with the original. There is a reason for that. There's a reason for that. So... The two things we can link together, there's a, a line, it's, a, it's not who you come with, honey, it's who you go home with. Yeah. It's... Or who takes you home, something along those lines. Yeah. Pure coincidence, and the name of the school. Hamilton High. Another coincidence. This movie, so it came out in 1987, the original yeah. prom that came out in 1980. It was filmed under the title of The Haunting of Hamilton High. Mm. It was after the fact that they changed it to Prom Night 2. Most of the actors didn't know they were in a Prom Night sequel until they sort of went to the premiere. Because they were not in a Prom Night sequel. Yeah, the fact that it was the same school, incredible coincidence. But that's why there's so di- such a disconnect yeah. between them. Okay. Like, the school is a different school. Up until the film was released, this was not intended to be a sequel to, to Prom Night. And also, you know, seven years on, that's a, still like a fairly big gap for, for a sequel. I mean, we do we have been around for the uh, the rise of... For what yeah, sequels to movies. That that is that is very true. But yeah, this was just intended to be a standalone little supernatural high school horror film. That yeah. the literally the eleventh hour was latched on to to prom night. I guess in a last ditch attempt to help boost sales, maybe. I can understand but that. It didn't work. <laughs> I can, to be fair, I'm gonna say I think it did. Because I think having the prom night name on it probably would have boosted it a bit more than it just being an original supernatural the film. Of Hamilton High. I would have gone to see that movie. Yeah. 
I think it's important to look at the horror landscape at the time. When the first one came out, it was all about Halloween. Yes. When this one came out, it was all about Nightmare on Elm Street. Yes, yeah, Supernatural and that's why they went. Back. Yeah, that's why they went along the Supernatural route. The special effects guy, I can't remember his name, was the guy who designed Freddy's glove and did a lot of the effects, like the one when he comes through the wall. Yeah, yeah. And they do a scene like that later in the film, which we'll get into. Sure. So, so they were right, let's take the guy who worked on Nightmare on Elm Street, let's have a couple of supernatural-based kills, we'll have some dream sequences. And also, you know, just by fact that this is, the opening takes place at prom, this is all about, you know, who's going to be crowned prom queen... Obviously, we got some Carrie influence going yeah. on there. Well, well, also, Freddy Krueger was burned to death. I, I, that, that's very true. Just like Mary Lou was. We also can't ignore, this is this is two years after Marty McFly saves his parents. And there's, there's a fair little bit, especially in the 50 sequences and that prom prom scene. There's a lot of Back to the Future little nods as well. Yeah. I even think Mary Lou's dress, it's kind of like this nice light coral little number she's wearing. It's very similar to what Lorraine wears at, at the... Uh, what is it? Fish under the sea dance? Yeah. Fish, um, <laughs> motion of the ocean? I don't know. I can't remember. I do love Back to the Future. Enchantment though. under the sea. Enchantment under the sea. Motion of the Ocean's a McFly album. <laughs> uh, McFly! <laughs> uh, I knew the, the connection was there somewhere. Obviously, Carrie is a massive influence as well. The only yeah. thing that wasn't an influence on this movie was its predecessor. Yeah, that's so true. <laughs> which is wild. It's wild, uh, yeah. Do you want to talk about... Mary Lou as a ghost, because she is quite an interesting ghost. But I, the way they handle her might not be the best. I would love to talk about Mary Lou, because I, I love her very much. But, I, okay, I think we kind of need to talk about when we first went into this movie, we didn't really have a lot of context for what it was about. All I knew was it was a sequel to Prom Night, and that it was something to do with the supernatural, which was enough to make me want to watch it. But then as I started watching it, and I'm seeing the opening of Mary Lou being burned to death on prom night i'm seeing how she's a very like self-confident very sex positive character and when we get into the 80s we have we, we've got a sequence with vicky and one of her friends who turns out has she slept with a boy she's become pregnant to the boy and the boy's completely ghosted her and we get this little sequence between Vicky and this girl, Jess, I think she's called, and Jess doesn't know what to do, and she's really upset, and she's devastated, and she's pregnant, and she, oh god, it's awful. So I was, I started thinking, okay, well, maybe then this film is going to go down the, you know, girl power, Mary Lou seeking revenge on the boys, because, you know, as a character who was also wronged by a boy, is literally dead because of a boy, you know, is she going to, like fight the good fight for the for the girls and the answer to that is no <laughs> we don't get any of that this is not this is not a girl power movie at all mary lou is absolutely just out for herself she kills people purely to for, for her own for her own gain as david was saying she wants to become prom queen again now that she's been her spirit is is released she is vengeful absolutely but she's got her sights on that crown and she wants it and that is her main goal so Jess the pregnant friend is the first one to be killed yeah. in the 1980s her spirit is kind of released for some reason when Vicky opens up a trunk which has her crown and cape in it yes which I always think is kind of a weak link to be perfectly honest especially with something else later on when we talk about the possession in general the reason she goes after Dr- Jess is because Jess is just what, doing art late, just arting her problems away, and she starts picking the jewels out of the dress, so she's going to make some. So she's went after the, her crown. Yeah. And that's why she tries it. They absolutely, because of budget, could, they had a guillotine. So the cape wraps around her neck and drags it towards the guillotine, and then instead of killing that way, hangs her. Very much like Nightmare on Elm Street. It is very similar to Nightmare. Yeah. But yeah, you think with her being a wronged pregnant woman, that she'd be someone she'd want to stand up for. But no. That's what I just... I, I, I actually think that's actually kind of interesting. I, I do I as like well. It. I, it just completely kind of derails a selfish me. ghost. She's a very vengeful, very selfish ghost. Yeah, like in death as, as she as she was in, in life. And I thought, okay, movie, that that's interesting. You just completely subverted my, my expectations there. Just going back to the whole her spirit is locked in the trunk situation. I know you've got problems with that i think the simplest way to explain it is her spirit is very firmly attached to the the prom queen crown 
like it has sp- she wants that tiara and the tiara is something that has been locked away in this trunk for 30 years so as soon as vicky opens said trunk it unleashes a ghost right. i think that's just the simplest way all right to... so this almost feels like the our omen video where i'm gonna we're gonna have very different points on this david v sam and I think this is a problem I have with the movie. It's kind of similar to movies or recently, The Exorcism. At what point did our main character get possessed? Yeah, that's unknown. We don't yeah. actually know. So, opens a chunk, release the spirit. Uh, so, assume she got a little bit possessed. Later on in the movie, she finds Mary Lou's gravestone. And then, right afterwards, starts acting a bit strange. Like, what? Well, there's a. The other runner up for prom queen is a bit bitchy and she goes, like, says something to her and she goes, shut your fucking mouth, bitch. bitch. Which is great. But is not Vicky. No, absolutely it's not Vicky. That's Mary Lou. So it's like, oh, so she got a little bit more from the gravestone. Yeah. There's a scene in her bedroom later on where, very nightmare, and also quite kind of poltergeisty when a rocking horse kind of comes to life. Her sheets kind of like pin her mm. down into the bed. And to me, I'm like, oh my God, this is a, this feels like a possession scene. Mm. Mm. And then we have the actual possession scene afterwards. I'm like, there's so many opportunities. Yeah. It, it's never fully ex- explained. I mean, she's certainly not possessed from the minute that trunk opens. No, I think it's she's slowly getting broken down, but I think what it could have sold it much more is ultimately, Mary Lou is a presence in this movie, but we very rarely actually see the ghost. Mm. And I think we needed some scenes, some more scenes of Mary Lou and Vicky. And Vicky. To show that, yeah, almost like have her get closer. So there are a couple of scenes where Vicky has like dream sequences and sees the school kind of like in ruins and mm. at one point gets pushed on by a, a greaser who mm. thinks she's Mary Lou, which, yeah. is, which is very cool. What I think would have been much cooler is if we had some flashbacks to the school in the 50s yeah. and if she could see Mary Lou like in the distance and you do a nice little wipe when someone walks past her, have the ghost get closer and closer to her. Yeah. And then that could kind of, that could quite easily explain it away. It's like she's slowly possessing her over time. Who, who directed this one again? Bruce Pittman did Bruce Pittman. most of it. He, direct, he directed the initial cut. Ron Oliver, the writer, also did some reshoots. And another guy also did some re- yeah. So many people have had their fingers in this pie. Definitely. That, so it's, no wonder it's a little bit it's disjointed, a, bit a little mess. bit confusing. I will say that Ron Oliver, who was the... Um, I think he was the exec producer who came in to, to do some reshoots. He arguably did some of the more iconic Interesting stuff. Yeah. scenes. So, I mean, you know, fair play to him. I also think he has a cameo at the end at the, at, in the 80s prom as, as well. I know exactly what you're saying. Um, should we talk about some scenes that we particularly like? Yes. And then we'll go into like some... We'll extrapolate a little bit more on some pet peeves. Because there's a lot of pet peeves yeah. that we have. But there's some also really cool standout sequences. I you just saying there, like, there are some 50s flashbacks. I love them. I agree. I don't think we get enough it's, of They're them. not even 50s flashbacks, are they? It's like... It, feel, again, it feels like the dream world yeah, it's like a from, dream Nightmare, escape, from it's Nightmare like, on Elm Street with elements of 50s in it. And I think they could have gone a bit yeah. harder on that. Like, there's a moment where she she's in the canteen, but it's a very, like, grungy, grimy, horrible version of a school mm. canteen, and the, the woman is serving, like, green slop yeah. and worms sprouting out of it. So, yeah, very Nightmare-inspired. I like that. Yeah, I love it. In the gym, when she get, when the bitch character, I can't even remember her name, uh, throws a volleyball off her head, and then suddenly she's surrounded by... 50s volleyball players like Mary Lou they get stuck in a web yeah yeah that, that was pretty cool that's pretty cool the scene I mentioned before in her bedroom that was pretty cool the rocking horse is great it very again Freddy inspired where the tongue comes out and it's almost you know very like salacious and very seedy and ugh, it's horrible um, it's weird to associate those personality traits with a woman yes it's like Mary Lou is the CD character. Mary, you know what? Like we always talk about in horror, how the boys are the reigning champion for the slashes and like the more iconic horror villains. Mary Lou is criminally underrated, and I think it's as you were saying, it's because we don't see enough of the actual actress. Yeah. Another thing I do actually kind of like about this movie is Wendy Lyons, who who plays Vicky. She starts the movie off as, you know, very meek and very timid, and she's very much under the control of her domineering, overly religious mother. Also very Carrie-inspired. And she's, you know, she's a good girl in the, in the high school, and she's got a boyfriend, and things are very chaste bet- between them. But she's a good girl. Really. Like, she's a little bit of a goody, goody, goody. And then once the possession really starts to kick in, which, yes, admittedly, is a bit of a gradual process... 
when Wendy Lyon starts acting like Mary Lou, I think she does a stellar job. Oh, yeah. She is a lot of fun to watch. And I can kind of forgive the movie for not showing us the actual Mary Lou because I do think that Wendy Lyons, as Vicky, as Mary Lou, does a really good job of embodying that yeah, her bad performance, girl persona. I'm going to hold off on comment on that early performance until... Pet peeves. A bit late until pet peeve, peeves. But when she is Mary Lou, she is very good. And that she leads to like... It. I think... Before I go into what this scene is... I feel like I need to describe my first experience watching this movie. <laughs> yes, you should. You absolutely we, should. We were visiting some of my family. So we were just watching it late one night. We were yeah. just having a night having a night, in. We thought, oh, it's on Prime. Let's give it a watch. I'll give it a go, yeah. And I was knackered. I was not concentrating on the movie. I wasn't enjoying it. No. And both my, my dad and my sister were on two separate nights out with friends. And they both came back at different points, slightly tipsy. I just sat down and were very confused by what we we're watching. <laughs> my dad came back in when, during this scene, when there's a full frontal nudity. Everything's swell. And he just had no idea what was going on and couldn't get the hint. I'm like, go away, you're trying to watch a movie. Please leave. <laughs> then my sister came back towards the last 15 minutes of the movie. Also didn't really know what we were watching. And then I had a video call my friends. I was like, bugger off. <laughs> I really felt for your dad because he came in at yeah, you like a very um, <laughs> the worst, the worst possible, possible time. scene. A, you know, a girl is full, like full frontal nude on the screen, and I think what <laughs> what actually probably did him in was when a character gives a, a guy a blowjob, yeah. and then your dad was like, "Right, I'm, <laughs> I'm heading out now. <laughs> nice to see you. I'll see you in the morning." It was uh, yes, it was not the best time to watch no. a movie for the first. I mean, when I rewatched it, I enjoyed it more, but my problems I had with it still yeah. lingered. Yeah. But I enjoyed it much more being awake and Actually not annoyed. Awake. Yes. Yeah. When uh Vicky uh, Vicky possessed by Mary Lou decides to kill her best friend, it's honestly incredible. She kind of confronts her friend in the shower, fully naked. Yeah. The uh, the actress who played her friend, I can't remember what her friend's called. Monica. Monica. She did not want to do front for full until she said she'd be fine with the side view but during the actual chase she wanted to wear a towel. So the broken was fine with that. Yeah. Vicky, she was fully up for it. Yeah. There's just an extended scene of her slowly chasing after Monica. Fully nude. Yeah. And honestly, I've yeah, got to get, I've, yeah. that's not even sarcastic. I've got to give her props because that is really brave. And it's such a contrast to Vicky from the beginning of the movie. Yes. We know this is not something she would do. And I think Ever. this scene... This is one of the scenes that was heavily reshot by John Oliver. Ron Oliver. Ron Oliver, not John Oliver. Not Ron John o- Oliver. <laughs> no, Ron Oliver. And it took her like it took her like three days to do it. So it was three days of her just walking around naked. Really, really good scene. I oh, can I can imagine this being a sexual awakening scene for many a young boy or young woman. Who, back whoever in the day. saw this. Back it would have been it would have been for me if I'd seen it earlier than this. Yeah, she's great. I, yeah, as full full props to to Wendy for for doing it. Bruce, I think it, ultimately it was shot a little bit by Pittman and a little bit by Oliver. This one because Bruce Pittman has he did later admit that the scene was ultimately gratuitous. Like there was no real reason that the actress needed to be naked. He just suggested, "Would you be up for it?" And she said yes. But he also wanted to commend her because ultimately, yes, it was like two to three days of Wendy walking around fully naked in front of what was a largely male crew yeah. as as well. And then I think Ron Oliver came in because on IMDb it says that he reshot the climax of the scene, which ultimately is fantastic. Yeah. So you've got Monica who's hiding from Vicky. I don't know why she didn't just leave the <laughs> locker yeah. room. But she ultimately decides to hide in an actual locker. All Vicky did was try and kiss her in the shower. Yes. But it's again, not... it's like, imagine your best mate doing that. Like, absolutely zero context. Just yeah. trying to seduce you fully But It's, all, it's not shower. like she's chasing her with a knife. No. She could have, like you said, just left. She could have just simply left. Just simply left. left. <laughs> but I, you know, I like a locker room chase, I, you know, and especially when they're done really well. This one is... A lot of things remind me of Slumber Party Massacre, actually. You know, the egregious shower scene at the very beginning. But also, you know, the really good chase scene through the lockers. Yeah, yeah, again, yeah. absolutely. I think this one trumps Slumber Party, though. Oh, yeah. This is infinitely more memorable. The first Slumber Party. Yeah. And, yeah, Monica hides in an actual locker, and she's, you know, she's holding her breath, and she's trying not to make any noise. But Vicky knows exactly where she is, and she just very slowly, completely naked, like, saunters up, and she rests against the other locker, 
And then she does that little 50s bop, doesn't yeah. she? Like, a wop bop a loop a wop bam a wop bop a loop a wop bam And then the lockers just smash together and you just see like blood and pus just oozing out of like the little vent yeah. section of a locker. It's so cool. Absolute standout scene. It really is, yeah. It's, it's very inventive. So whoever came up with that whole idea, whether it was Pittman, whether it was Oliver, I don't know, but yeah. It was great. great. The actual possession scene I think is fantastic. Mm-hmm. At one point, Vicky is in class. This is before she's fully possessed. Uh, and she sees Mary Lou sat next to her. So yeah. she slaps her and ends up slapping her, the bitch character. Yes. I, I will... Actually, I'm not, I'm, I'm not even going to lie. I'm not going to learn her name. I think it was Kelly. I want to say she's Kelly. She's not an interesting character. She, no. she serves very little purpose to the plot. And that lands Vicky in detention. Yes. And she starts seeing, like, backwards writing on the chalkboard. One says, first in hell, and then help me. So she goes up to it. And in a scene, again, very reminiscent of Nightmare. And we imagine the same guy did this. Like as I mentioned earlier, he did the scene where Freddy comes through the wall and stretches it. Arms come through the chalkboard and get her. And it honestly looks incredible. Yeah. And pulls her in. It turns into like a whirlpool. So that was kind of done on like a... So you imagine like a room. The pool, the wall was here as a pool with a camera mounted on the ceiling. And she's kind of like being dragged around the water. That is amazing. It really is. It's it's it really, really well really, done. So... Very inventive. God, Wendy had a lot of tough scenes in this movie. She room. did, yeah. I, I think this would... It sounds like it was a fun... It looks like it was a fun movie to, to make. I actually... Yeah, like, it, there's a lot of cool stuff. That also was, was Ron Oliver. I think those are all the key scenes that he Didn't did. Didn't he also do, do the Rockin' Horse? Oh, he did the Rockin' Horse. Rockin' Horse as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I guess he was the one that was like, oh, let's make it sentient. Yeah. Let's get the let's add the, Let's add the nightmare elements in here. Personality, yeah. Things like these aren't cheap things to add in. No, no, like takes time. You yeah, know, like fair play for the special effects department. Yeah, all those scenes are, are fantastic. Um, <laughs> a scene that I do find really icky, but I also really like that it's there is when you know the night of the prom, and Vicky's got a dress and she's on the rocking horse and she's kind of like caressing it, oh, and then God, her dad scene. walks in, a biological dad, who Vicky just proceeds to completely make out with. Now. From, like, a possession point of view, I understand, you know, Mary Lou in the in the body of Vicky. Obviously, they're not related. And Mary Lou is a very, you know, like, she likes her, she likes the boys. Many boys, many times. But it's the fact that Vicky's dad does not push his daughter away. Yeah. It almost looks like it's reciprocated. And that, I just don't, I, I, I love that. Yeah. But then, like, yeah. a mum comes in, so just blasts her mum out the front yeah. door. Re- yeah. That's really cool. We are going to spell the ending. Yes. In order to talk about scenes we really like, we have to talk about the ending. The prom. So, a kill on a character that we really like, who actually, the actor, appeared in the first movie. So, that's another link. Yeah. What's the name of the actor? Brock Simpson. The character is called Josh. Yeah. He plays like, he's kind of just a friend. He's just like a friend, but he's in charge of announcing the prom queen. They never bother with the prom king in this one. No, it's not about the Uh, boys. For some reason, they're doing it on a computer screen. But he played one of the kids in the opening of Prom Night, the it's original one. Another big coincidence. Another big, big coincidence. Just, I think it also happens that the producer of this movie was the same producer. And he does appear in all four of the original films as different characters. I think his dad was the producer. His, yeah, his dad was the producer. And that's why he was he was the producer of this movie and the original one. Oh, yeah. yeah. And that, that So that's why I think they added the Prom Night thing to it. Probably. And then yeah. it's just like, oh, well, we should have him play characters in all of them. Different characters. Yeah. But yeah, I I like Josh. I, he's a he's a funny one. Like it's the, the film is obviously centered around like Vicky being possessed by by Mary Lou, but there's some funny side characters. I think Josh is is one of the the, the standouts. He's got like a little cute relationship going on with Monica. He very kind of coyly asks her to be his prom date. You get some funny lines as well. Your mother so sucks yeah. in hell. Maybe she's possessed. Your mother so sucks in hell, Father Karras. Oh yeah, he has like one. That very seedy moment yeah so bitch character she's not 100% sure she can win I suppose probably mentioned the whole reason Vicky went down to the chest in the first place because her mum won't let her get a new prom dress so she goes into the prop section to try and find one yes bitch character goes to him asks him to change the vote and he's like well you know what my price is mm. so she gives him some head <laughs> yes 
Yeah, basically. Yeah. Which is a bit CD because Josh obviously had previous, previously asked Monica to be his date to the prom. However, Monica has been killed at this point, and I guess Josh is not aware of that. Yeah. No one is aware of that. So he probably just feels like he's been stood up. Yeah. They have a cute moment where they decide they're not going on a date. They're not each other's date. They're just both going to turn up at the same time, yeah. go together. Yeah. It's, it's, a, it's a very cute moment. So he, cha- he changes it. Mary Lou knows. She, Mary she just knows. Like that. Sticks a finger in a power outlet. And this is a really cool kill. Kills him with electricity through the computer. <laughs> and then understands coding and changes <laughs> yeah, yeah. back. This goes from the 50s. But the kill on him, it looks so... It's one of the most 80s looking kills. Oh, it's I've great. Ever it's seen. really good, yeah. And it's fantastic. It kind of, for some reason, got me thinking of Chopping Mall. Oh, I, I see what you mean. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, I get Chopping Mall vibes. Yeah. yeah. Vicky is crowned prom queen. And yeah. you see the bitch characters. And this is when uh, jo- Ron Oliver. Not John, John, John Oliver. Not John Oliver. He has that lion's egg. How'd you blow it? Hey, Kelly. How'd you blow it? Hey, Kelly, how'd you blow it? <laughs> Kelly's just like... I wish she comes back in, like, a drunker boyfriend. I was one of the worst dubbed lines in the movie. Isn't it's something really like... It's terrible. I, what, he's like, I drink. I get drunk. What's the problem? It's so, she, He kisses her and says, like, oh, you got any more of those mints? Yeah, I don't know. she's having a bad night. I drink. I get drunk. So what's the problem? So during all of this, Michael Ironside's been getting increasingly paranoid. Michael Ironside knows that Vicky is possessed by the spirit yeah. of Mary Lou. He, to his credit, he does put two and two together yeah. very quickly. By this point, Buddy, you know, the priest, is dead. But she only kills him because he starts to interfere. He kind of, you know, does some Bible stuff. And she's yeah. like, oh, nope. Because she, like we said earlier, she has zero interest in getting revenge. Hmm. But he does work it out. And he's straight up shoots Vicky on the stage. Yeah. In full view of literally the entire school. The very unshocked <laughs> school. Yeah. No one does anything to help her. They're all just standing there. Not one person, aside from her boyfriend, Craig, not one person rushes up to that stage. Yeah. I don't even hear anyone in the background being like, call an ambulance. And Everyone's then, just standing there. But then, this movie goes off the fucking rails. Mary Lou is resurrected from the body of Vicky. She tears herself out of Vicky's corpse. And first she's just like a zombie. She's covered in burns. But over time, just slowly, like between cuts, I think it was done in like eight different stages, yeah. ends up back to yeah. the Mary Lou we know with just like a little bit of a face scar. Yeah. I think why I'll enjoy this so much is because, well, we've got the actress back here and she starts just like killing people in the crowd. The bitch character gets such an unceremonious death. Yeah. And it's, this whole end sequence is really cool. Again, very carry. Balls to the wall. Yeah, it's balls to the wall. Insane. Yeah. Before I continue on to that, I think we should go through what we don't like because this leads into something that I don't like quite a bit. That's absolutely fair. My main criticism of this, I actually don't have that many pet peeves, but one of the things that I, I notice a lot whenever I do rewatch this this film is... Mary Lou, as a ghost, I think her motive is is quite inconsistent. I I think her her victims, in terms of why she targets the people she targets, there's not really a consistent logical reason as to why she kills who she kills. Like we said at the beginning, you know, I thought it was going to be, you know, like a, a girl power sort of movie where she goes after all the boys. It's fine that she doesn't do that. I'm happy with that. But... It doesn't always make sense necessarily why she kills who she ends up killing. Like the priest, that makes sense. He's part of her past. Um, Anyone that gets in her way, yeah, sure. But you would think that the one person she would target would be Michael Ironside. Yeah. You know, the, the one that was actually responsible for setting her on fire. And at no point in the film does she even make an attempt on him. We interrupt our program to bring you this important message. We'd like to shout out our Groovy members. We appreciate everything you do for this channel and helping us grow. You guys are awesome. My kind of issues throughout the film is it's massively inconsistent all the way through. I think okay. some bits are really choppy. The acting is not great. No! This isn't anything on the actress that plays Vicky, but I think the way she's written before she's possessed. I know she needs to be a bit more meek and, you know, the, the, the good girl, but 
She's so fucking boring. Uh, you can have innocent characters not be written. Yeah, you can. Boring. Yeah, totally. Yeah. It's like Nancy in Nightmare on Elm Street. I'm going to keep... For- She's... Or oh, Jamie Lee in Halloween. They're, they're innocent, pure characters, aren't they? Yeah. I know John Carpenter said that she wasn't necessarily supposed to be pure. That's just kind of the way it came off. Yeah. But they're interesting characters. They're fun characters. Yeah. Vicky is so boring. And it, I, I purely think that's down to the writing and the fact that we've had so many people come in and write different things, yeah. film different things. That it's It's almost a relief once she gets possessed. Because then the actress actually gets to she have fun alive, yeah. with the role. Because I honestly thought she was like the most boring character mm. in any of the slashes we watched recently until she got possessed. And I know there's like, you've got that dichotomy, I want to say. Mm-hmm. But it just, it makes her not very likable to me. And also, a lot of her side characters do not get enough screen time or are involved enough in the plot That's until fair. they get killed mm. to really be interesting. And then you've got like budgetary problems like a decapitation. Would have been really cool. Yes. Buddy, the priest, is killed off screen. That's also a bit late. Like, I do like that. Budget scene. kind of held a lot of this back. I think you can tell when anything's been reshot because the tone and quality just completely changes from the rest of the movie. It does flip flop. It doesn't help yeah. that like, the movie is not, the film is not of great quality. No. It needs a remaster. And I would love for some things to be added back in that have clearly been taken out. Yeah. Yeah. So of course, just. Inconsistent is my main problem that I've got with this film. And going into the ending specifically, Kelly could have been made of more of a nemesis. Yeah. At no point did I ever think she was going to be the prom queen. Or even the she prom queen. She tries too hard. Really, Vicky is not really that arsed about being prom queen no, either. of course not. No. It, she doesn't give a damn. And let's be fair. If they'd had some for, some you know foresight, they could to make this prom that sequel originally, we could have had a cool dance scene like the first one. Mm. After Mary Lou is back, What's uh, what's Vicky's boyfriend called again? Craig. Craig. She kind of chases Craig into the basement where the case is and uh, tricks him into thinking it's, it's Vicky again, and it all kind of falls down for me here because it doesn't really make sense. Like the case suddenly becomes really important again. It becomes like a bit of a portal, and she mm. wants to put him into the portal to maybe live again. Who knows? Michael Ironside turns up with the tiara and crowns her the prom queen, and that seems to be enough. Then. Oh, it's all over, but then Vicky comes out of the case, covered in slime. I'm like, I've got no idea what's going on here. Vicky somehow survives the whole ordeal. Even though, like, she was her shot. ripped, her, she was shot and her ripped apart body is on the stage. Yeah. They get into the car with the principal, who, bear in mind, shot a student in front of many witnesses. The police are yeah. here. He's just going to take them home. <laughs> and he turns around and he's possessed by Mary Lou, which, to be fair, the priest, the one scene Buddy and Billy have as adults. But he does say to him, she wants to possess you. No evidence of this. And she does possess him at the very end. But her motivations do not make sense to why she would possess Billy at the very end. And they drive off. And I'm pretty sure the uh, the license plates are like Mary Lou too. Also, it's the end of Nightmare on Elm Street oh, 1. Oh, completely. Which is not a good ending. It's not a good... No, it's famously <laughs> not a good ending. Yeah. And I just think the ending of that... comes in the, When they're actually at the prom and on the stage, this movie peaks. It's incredible. It's fun. It's cheesy, it's camp as hell, it's great. And then just nosedives like a graboid at the end of Tremors off the fucking <laughs> cliff. I Get, just, it's so inconsistent. I don't understand it. Literally, yeah, that's that's the thing. It's like, why why would she want to possess Michael Ironside? I understand He's not why been part she, of a plan at any no, point in this movie. I understand why she would want to kill Michael Ironside. I also can understand why she would want to target his son, Craig. As revenge, you know, like, oh, if I kill the try. She tries to have sex with him. She does, yeah. Which obviously is obviously something he's wanted with Vicky for a while. And Yeah. I can understand why she would ra- want to try and kill Craig as well. Like, if I kill his son, that'll really hurt him. But she doesn't succeed in doing that either. And that also doesn't necessarily seem to be, like, her main motive. Like, that's ultimately the thing. It's, if Vicky hadn't have been shot on the stage, would Mary Lou have just continued living on as Vicky? Or would she always have found a way to, like, pull herself out of her body? Yeah. Would her spirit have been put at rest? Yeah. Because clearly, once she once she's out of Vicky's body, she is, appears human she's again. Corporeal. Yeah, she's just completely solid. corporeal. Yeah. Like, she put, I, I do like the scene with Michael Einstein when he puts the crown on her. Like, and she, with the, we get, like, that nice little flashback to the 50s again. But what comes after that, I don't... It doesn't really make sense to me. And it's almost like they had... They had a full plot and they had a full story... 
And then it feels like for the last five minutes, they had no idea... What to do. What to do. It would have made a bit more sense had she just killed Michael Ironside. Yeah. And then, like, I don't know, even, like, tried to repossess Vicky, or I, d- I don't know. But or for Vicky to cast her out. Yeah, just just something. Just something. I don't, I don't, I don't know. It, the, yeah, it's it's the biggest gripe. It, it's, it is a bit inconsistent, and it, the ending doesn't, unfortunately, it doesn't really make a lot of sense. I have no idea if Prom Night 3 continues from where we leave off with this one, or if it's also like a standalone story. Last time we were watching it, Prime automatically started playing Prom Night 3 afterwards. I was like, no, nah, I, I can't, no more. Yeah. Another night. <laughs> I can't. I Another night. Can. I think if we were to do the other ones, I think we'd do 3 and 4 just in one video. Probably, yeah. But I I really, I love this. I don't know if you can tell. Like, I have a big soft spot you for You definitely this enjoyed it a bit more than I did. Like, I had fun with it. Yeah. But this is a background movie for me. But I also, it kind of leads into something that we've both talked about quite a lot, is gripes, inconsistencies aside, would this work if it was made today? And yes. I absolutely think it would. It, I think this should be remade. It's definitely a film that would warrant a remake more than the original, just because the story is yes. a bit more fun. Do you think, I think we, we've discussed this quite at length, actually, surprisingly, of whether or not, if they were the remake it, should they stick with it from 50s to 80s, mm. or should they have it be from 80s to modern day? Obviously, exactly. there's a bit of 80s fatigue at the moment. There is, yeah. So maybe that's why the flashback bit could be the 80s, and set in Monday could be quite fun. Yeah. So or you... even have it go from 50s to modern day. Yeah. Because you got such a culture shock there, like they're so different, that could be... So much fun. You could easily do that, yeah. I I think the biggest obstacle is if you flat out remake it with you know tightening a few plot points here here and there. You've got you've got the biggest issue of yeah, are, are people just a bit bored of, of the eighties now? Has Stranger Things just kind of like killed any love people had for the? We'll find the out 80s. when the last season eventually comes out. Exactly, but I absolutely think that you can remake this. There's there's enough story here that you could easily do this to today. Again, just you know, like maybe introduce a few more fifties flashbacks if you if we do choose to set it in the fifties. Yeah. I really do think fifties the modern day because if we take out the whole because well this whole movie took out the whole let's re- have revenge part yeah. of the plot, so let's not include any characters that were alive except as old men. Yeah, really old men. So because then you could have like a possessed Vizzy Vicky visiting them. Yeah, and they could even just die from shock. So you don't really need that tenuous link with characters that were there that prom night. What we need is that culture difference between the 1950s and the 2020s. Yeah, which is... That's the, where the fun could be had with this movie. Yeah, because especially like the scenes where in, in the movie where Vicky starts taking on the persona of Mary Lou, but she also starts dressing like like she's from the 50s. And a few people comment, you know, like, oh, what are you wearing today? Like, that's a bit unusual. It would be even more yeah. unusual now if you started dressing like the 1950s well, in a high school. Scenes I would have loved in this movie would be like, you know, the typical like walk past the mirror and you'd see like Mary Lou with obviously Vicky yeah. side by side and maybe even have a swap at one point where when she's possessed, she looks in the mirror and sees herself almost like shouting at her through the mirror because she's obviously possessed her. Can't yeah. control it. St- fun stuff like that. Or people could be recording a TikTok or something like that and there's a it could glitch and we see Mary Lou on the videos yeah there's things that you could do granted you could have a lot of probably be it. a bit tropey by modern standards but that's what this type of movie needs is to be a trope fest yeah and just have fun with it I think I, I actually get excited at the idea of having this movie remade I think you could really do something interesting yeah with it I mean we've also talked a little bit about how it reminded us a bit like of Buffy the Vampire Slayer like it did this, actually yeah it, this could easily be an episode from from Buffy and there, the, it did actually remind me of a very specific one, um, where I think it's like a fairly early one where there's B- Buffy and Angel are possessed by two spirits in the high school that had like a murder suicide pact, yeah, or something like that, and then they're doomed to replay that last night over and over again. There's another episode. It's quite an early one where a daughter doesn't really want to do what her mum did in school, so her mum possesses her. To, uh, to relive the glory days. Yeah. Because yeah. she doesn't feel like her daughter's making enough of her time. Yeah. So maybe Buffy was inspired by this movie. Maybe. I also just think the character of Mary Lou, you know, like, again, this this woman that apparently is like a bit of a fish out of... What's the expression? Fish out of water. Fish out of water, yeah. Because, I mean, 
For the 50s, she was the very 50s, out of place. She's very out of place, yeah. She's a very modern gal. She'd actually do very well, you know, now. I think she'd love it. She'd absolutely love it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I You could have so much fun with it. I, I haven't got so so far as to think of casting choices well, things, or anything, but I do think the plot alone you could do. You could even have it where maybe some people prefer Possessed Vicky. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, you're a lot more Apparently, fun now. It's a shame the actress that played Mary Lou didn't really go on to do that much. Not that, no. Uh, Wendy Lyons did go on and do a fair yeah, bit. I mean, she was in Shape of Water as well, but yeah, she's, like, consistently right. worked yeah. since. And that's good because, like I said, once she's possessed, she's great. Yeah, she, yeah. It gives it an all. Honestly, that shower scene. Like, she's got, I know she doesn't, but she's got balls <laughs> for yeah. that scene because that's, because she looks so calm. calm. And, and that's, like, like she must have been it. terrified. Yeah. But I love it. So many of these movies we see cases of, like, directors pressuring actors to do it. Mm. And I'm really glad in this one it was mainly a suggestion. She's like, yeah, great, do let's do it. I'm up for it. I'm doing it. Yeah. It almost reminds me, you remember Jason Takes Manhattan where there was an actress that was nervous for to be nude in a shower scene so the director just stripped off and did it himself to show that it's not so bad. Yeah. And it, that it, that made it into the dailies. Yeah. <laughs> and it seems like such an obvious thing to say but I like it when actors are made to feel comfortable. Of course, yeah. I mean, it, it's a shame that, you know, we have to point it out. It should yeah. just be a given, but yeah. And... I mean, I, I've not I've not seen anything of Wendy Lyons like talking about her experience on the movie, but I would like to think she had a nice time. She has yeah. fun memories. I mean, she got to do it. all the prosthetic work. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Which again, that's incredible. Yeah, yeah. Have you got any more notes on this one? I don't really have any more notes other than I, I, if you can, I do recommend tracking it tracking it down. Well, it's, it's, I said it's on Prime. It's free to watch on Prime yeah, with ads. Just don't go into it expecting anything like the original Prom Night. It is no. not that movie at all. I'd actually, I do like the original Prom Night, but even in our video, we admitted it's not one of our favourites. That's that's probably a more coherent yeah. product at yeah. the end of the day. This one, if you want to have a bit more of a laugh. Yeah. It's essentially, it's a bit more fun. I think if you want a bit more cheese. Anything's better than, than the remake of well, the think, original one. That Yeah. I think 2008, was it 2008 that one? I think so. Proved that you can't, it, it's not as fun if you remake the, the original one. There's not, it, as good as a movie as I think it is, and I do actually enjoy the original Prom Night a lot, there's not a lot of substance there to warrant a remake or a reboot. Hello Mary Lou. There's yeah. a lot. We should you be remaking speak. bad movies to yes. make them better. And that's yes. what we can do here. We exactly. Can, yeah, we could put all the pieces together into a more coherent yes. story. So, petition and... for this to be remade. Yes. So, thanks a lot, guys. And we'll see you next week.